any rock and roll band will do a, a date in London. But I think that's that's true of every orchestra, every comedian, every artist of every discipline will come through London. I love working for a little part of London that is that is older than London itself. But basically, it goes back to well, when William the Conqueror was here, and it was called Londinium then. Um, and it's just amazing to be part of something uh, that is basically, it's still its own little entity, you know. The cultural side of London is so diverse now to what it was when I first started here uh, 17 years ago. And for us, that's great because there's more stuff we can offer now, so uh, we can offer music from all around the world because the London audience is from around the world and that's just increasing. A lot of people are involved in making a production. There's hundreds of people that nobody ever really sees or knows goes on. And also there's lots of different specialist industries within it. One of the things about our cultural sector in London is that it's a very diverse sector. So there isn't one dominant industry. So we have a mix of film and fashion and art and design and games. And really it's all part of the mix. And that's, that mix makes up London's USP as a creative capital. London is certainly the centre of theatre in the UK, but it also produces theatre which is shipped out to a lot of territories around the world as well, and it would be impossible to do this work not being based in London. We have a really comprehensive stock which we send all over the world but uh, most of our work is London or around London and we dress stately homes. We supply theatre companies, the Barbican and all the West End theatres so if you were dressing a palace, a chateau, an embassy, any sort of set like that we will supply things for that and they'll make the audience believe that they're actually in a real embassy or a real palace, but they're in London. As lighting designers, we work through several mediums and it means that there's a whole kind of cross-section uh, of work that we can really get our teeth into and that's kind of particular of being in such a big metropole that you've got such a range of opportunity. Unless it's incredibly dramatic, lighting isn't something that you always notice and often that's a good thing. The key thing for us is making the objects be the kind of star of the vision, I suppose. One of the luxuries that I have being an installer is I get the gallery to myself with no public there. So if I need to walk around and take everything in and admire everything that's been done, not just my stuff but other people's, I'm the luckiest bloke in London. I get the whole place to myself. London, of course, is a huge centre for classical music, so I have pianos in all the big venues in London. And these venues are all homes to the tuners because they spend so much time there. 
Stymie London, I think, sells more pianos than continental Europe because the market is so great. So the logistics of where we are placed is ideal and we shouldn't be anywhere else. Uh, we need to be in central London. One could argue all Stami they can be somewhere in Hayes or somewhere near Heathrow, but it's important that we are in the hub of the city. London grows and its population increases and there's lots of stuff happening. There's always some challenges that come with that success. One of which is as the land price goes up, it makes it harder for businesses which need more space or which need to be kind of a bit noisy and loud to find the right location for them. Um, and often they're having to move further out outside the city centre and that's something which London needs to manage. Because London is a growing city, it's a very expensive city, this puts pressure on creative production space, on creative space more generally. It's fair to say that all big global cities face these kinds of challenges, but I think they're particularly acute in London. The theatre business in the, in the centre of London probably isn't really changing at all because the theatres are where they are, they're listed buildings, they're never going to be able to be knocked down, they're never going to be able to do anything like that. But for the people that actually make the work, people like us, it's changing massively. Because we're in very close proximity to the centre and we know that in time that the area will get developed because the tide will come in, the developers will move in and then the tide will go out and hopefully we'll be one of the people left on the beach when the tide's gone back out. On one hand, there's a lot of volume, which is good because we need material to operate our business. On the other hand, we have to be um, completely bought in and invested in the way that you run fleet in London. Our position is that actually you need processing plants, recycling centres closer to the heart or within the fabric of an urbanisation. The skyline in London is changing. That means the services that we provide to work around those contractors building these multi-storey, whether it be residential development or commercial developments, we have to modify our services to satisfy the nature of the, the build. London space for industry is changing. It's, it used to be associated with heavy industry polluting, industry big factories, whereas that industrial space is now really changing. It's used now more for uh, light industrial, um, innovative maker space. Um, things like logistics are becoming more important, uh, particularly with e-commerce. Um, small startups, incubator spaces, uh, creative industries. London and Londoners are increasingly demanding just-in-time products and bespoke niche type of products and those are the manufacturers that want and need to be in London now and we're going to see those growing. Gin, the way gin used to be made and the way we firmly believe gin should be made. The different cultures of cocktails that have arrived here in the city, the way people are drinking it. And, and I think that's true for rum and whiskey and beer and, uh, and even sort of books and theatre and gardening. I mean, you know, people want experiences. They don't just want information, they want understanding. We call it picking, but people call it urban harvesting, um, gleaning, glut picking. Call it what you like. The, the end result is that you're picking fruit that would otherwise go to waste. And there are lots of areas that used to be market gardens and orchards in London. So these things are, are tucked away. We've supplied Sipsmith for two years now uh, with some mulberries, but it's up to them if they come at the right time to pick them because picking is quite a time-consuming thing. You pick one at a time and uh, you get quicker at it.
So there's a myth that manufacturing in London is almost dead. And the most recent figures actually show that those employment figures are stabilising. And that's showing a more optimistic picture. And the question is, is that a blip? Or are we actually seeing a reversal and a change? The research uh, that we've been doing is trying to explore and celebrate what's happening in those industrial places. So kind of opening the box that otherwise is a kind of big, quite scary looking shed and saying these are the amazing things that are happening in here. These are the numbers of jobs, not that we guess, but that we know are happening there. We make things from sets, so walls and display items, to showcases, to interactive units, to really anything the client wants. We're based just uh, outside the stadium area on an industrial estate that's been here for many, many years. A lot of the business has been here for probably 30 or 40 years. We've got some funny metal workers, some specialists, platers, we've got a scenic artist, got some engineering companies, all of which we use. We try and use companies that are within the local area because it, it's easier for us and it's good to support local businesses. Theatre props particularly have a real beauty to them. It's someone's visualisation of what they want to see on stage. So there'll be the main company will have the project of putting together the whole set. Then when we come together and we're actually installing in the theatre, we all meet each other and it's it's like, hey, we're all a family again, so, you know, from the last time that we worked together. So I think London has a resilience and an energy that means that there is a place for industry and production and there will continue to be a place for industry and production, but there are a lot of challenges too. We have a huge workspace and accommodation crisis in London at the moment. Housing is dominating almost all redevelopment. The challenge for London is to maintain its diversity. And so with some development and large scale development, uh, you see the tendency to homogenize the offer both from the economic um, uh, profile of the target market um, but also a homogenisation of use. So the future of industry in London, I'm sure, will be a mixed picture. We see some really worrying trends about land that's being released or changed to other uses, and I'm sure that that will continue, at least in the short term. If we stick to business as usual, we will definitely see the loss of a lot of those businesses. Some of them will move out of London to other parts of the UK. Some of them will move abroad, some of them will close. And we can't just assume that we can keep them. Well, it's getting harder, of course, way harder in London, because London's losing its creativity centre. So now it's becoming way more office and IT centre. What we do is such a specialised area, we're all getting stretched and pushed out of centre of London. Unfortunately for people like us, it doesn't really become an artisan area anymore. It's a double-edged sword though, isn't it really? In the past ten years, it becomes a desirable place to be, but then with that comes people want to move here and want to live here, and then people decide that they need to find places to to house them and then the industrial buildings get turned into accommodation and, and slowly but surely you move what was desirable about that area for everyone which was the creative side of it out. For me what's changing slightly in London at the moment is kind of a recognition that um, you need a resilient economy uh, and that means being quite diverse. Uh, and, and you need to have a, a variety of different types of employment. London's got to continue to firstly recognise that, um, put some resources into trying to address that, and, and then it's really around why London, what is the quality of place. We need to innovate and collaborate more around the provision of new space. That could mean co-location, that could mean intensification, or actually mixing up some uses.
We need to engage with those developers as well and those landowners to make sure they're having those conversations with us about doing something more creative than just flipping straight from industrial uh, to housing. There's actually great opportunity for innovation, new types of buildings, new types of space that can be delivered and hopefully this context means that some of those innovative and exciting things will come to fruition. We're working with numerous local authorities and the Greater London Authority to bring forward multiple schemes across London working in collaboration with those landowners to give businesses in London the right space they need to grow and remain productive. And as architects we can find solutions to bring different uses closer together where they might not have been thought of as compatible previously. We've been looking at new typologies, new architectural typologies that try and provide as much employment space, as much workspace, as much industrial space as possible in a smaller piece of land and trying to think about how those industrial uses can be better neighbours to the rest of the city. The future will be as varied as industrial economic activity is varied. Um, we're going to see makers come to the fore, we're going to see urban services have a, a, a squeeze, but we're also going to see a lot of innovation in how our business models form and how um, things are kind of moved ar around the city. Hopefully we'll see a lot more mixed use um, at, at varying scales. But London's always changing and I think that's what's special about London. It doesn't stand still. It continuously alters itself to embrace uh, uh, the wonders of all the different corners of, of the world that come together here. There's nothing better than when you've been working on something and 2,000 people jump out of their seats at the end of the night um, and they're whooping, clapping their hands and they're talking about it on the way out and you can hear what a great night they've had and that, that makes everything worth it. Everybody works very hard doing what they do and stuff but some, sometimes you want to go and witness something which is otherworldly that will touch you to your soul and, and you'll always remember and to be a, a, any small cog in making that happen, what, what a job that is, that's, that's amazing. Once you come down and sit in our seats and if you get the sound right, if you get the light right, you kind of take them into this kind of hypnotic state where they're not actually thinking about their woes outside, they're just here in the moment. That's kind of, kind of what we want to try and create is the moment really. Tommy and Bill feeling right and your absence is the one thing that I'll blame.